Hey, it's time for another episode of On Top and Hot with your favorite host, John Zadar, and this is Sunday, August 7th. Now, what we like to do on this show is we like to look at OTC and penny stocks, stocks that are catching attention from the investors, lots of buzz on the internet, or have hot technicals on the charts. We're looking for breakouts, whether they have a catalyst or not, or they just may have great headlines. This is news I've personally looked at over the last five days. The oldest is at the top, the newest is at the bottom. Now, all of this news came from the otcmarkets.com website that I'm at right here. They're all penny stocks, but penny stocks don't necessarily have to be on the OTC market. Any stock under $5, regardless of what market it's on, NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, or the OTC is considered a penny stock. So we look at all of those. Now I do all of my research over here at the otcmarkets.com website, and so should you folks. It'll save you a lot of hassle and time. FINRA and the SEC update this site particularly every single day for every single OTC stock. Talk about making your research easy. Why go to Google sorting through decades of old information when you can come here and get it right the first time? Honestly, make your research easy. You can get a lot more done in a shorter amount of time and with less hassle. So, how did the OTC market fare on Friday? Well, let's refresh this, make sure my numbers are all current. I hope it's, oh, that is sad. Oh, bad day Friday, folks. $1.5 billion was how much money we generated on the entire market of 12,474 securities. Our average is 2.1, so that is pretty low. But what's really, really low, folks, is our share volume. That's gotten scary again. We're down to 5.5 billion. Our absolute low for 52 weeks is 4.2 billion, and that is anorexic. That's a coma. The market isn't doing a whole lot of folks. This is dangerous. I hate to see it this low. Trades, that hasn't moved. We still have about 250,000 trades, which is roughly where we've been hovering for the last couple of weeks. So the OTC market is struggling right now for some activity. So hopefully we're gonna see something change here. Maybe some marijuana laws change. Think about that, 1,000 companies on the OTC are marijuana companies, and there's 12,000 securities, so that's one twelfth of all OTC is marijuana. So if marijuana laws changed here in America, you'd probably see 1,000 companies start running. That'd be a good primer, that'd get the volume up, but that's the kind of thing we're looking for. It's gotta be something big, really. All right, today was a slow day on the market, so we always get weird runners on slow days, and that's what I got. I've got some weird runners today. Some of them are really huge. Some of them haven't run at all, but they've got great news, and they're just interesting. So I'm going to share these stocks with you and see what you think. Come on, I'm ready. First stock we're taking a look at is Locked and Loaded. This is ticker TRRI. This is Trinity Resources. Now, they did have big news come out on Thursday, but the investors didn't really do anything about it until Friday. However, they did not fail to impress. She finished on Friday at $1.25 with over 700% gains, right? Impressive. She's on the pink tier. She's current. She's got a verified profile and a transfer agent verified as well. You want to see these green ticks because it is verified information. It's being validated behind the scenes. And the more information you can get verified, the better. So this is looking good. Now, it is a proclaimed shell company. That just means they're not making any revenues right now because they don't have any business that they're doing. And everybody knows that and everything's kosher. We're waiting for a reverse merger or an acquisition. And that is what the news was all about today. Now, they tell us down here in their description that they are basically an exploration mining company around gold, silver, and platinum. But the news today doesn't show that at all. So I really don't think this is what they're into, though they might have something going on that I'm not aware of. So what was the relative volume around the company's news yesterday? Well, we normally have, geez, only 35,000 shares, 36,000 a day. Today, she did a little over a million. That's not a huge number, but that is a huge jump. Share structure, you ready for this? I know you're gonna like it, folks. We have a wow float, 437,000. Let's just call it a half a million and make it easy. A half a million in the float. Folks, if this thing sold a million shares today, that means they had to sell the float twice. 
all the shares that are out there to be sold got sold two times over, which means most likely people who are holding shares that bought them today had to sell them today if you wanted to buy any. That's called supply and demand. There's not enough to go around. And that's when prices start rising very quickly. So I'm not surprised to see a 700% gain with only a half a million shares. Now today they did a million shares. What if they do 5 million on Monday? I cannot imagine the growth, folks. Seriously, this could go to 2,000, 3,000% gains. We have been seeing that happen here recently. So there is some reasons to be excited about this stock. What is her financials? Zero, right? Because she's a shell company. We're not going to see anything here whatsoever. And her disclosures, but we know she's all caught up in her financials because she's pink current. I like to come here and look at their sec filings. We've got nothing here since 2008. So what we have is the news. Now there's a big gap in their news. 2013 was the last time we had any news come from them until January of this year. So we had about nine years of silence from this company. Although you can see all the news back then was about mining. Doesn't look like anything currently is. We got three pieces of news this year. They added some new directors and a new CFO, and they were telling us that they were going to broaden their opportunities. Then here in February, they tell us that they are changing their share structure. Now, this wasn't the shares that you and I trade, the unrestricted shares. These were the restricted shares that are only saved for the insiders, the management, big investors. They put in a bunch of new warrants, preferred stock. They changed all of that so that they could actually have some money in the bank and use it to make an acquisition which is what the news is today, or actually Thursday. It tells us that Trinity Resources Inc. finalizes the purchase of Alzac's medical assets and intellectual property. Now, as I said, this came out Thursday. Trinity Resources is pleased to announce that it has now entered into a binding asset purchase agreement with Alzac Biomedical. The purchase price for the asset shall be 10 million restricted shares of Trinity Series A convertible preferred stock and the sum of $150,000. Now they tell us that the shareholders of Trinity Series A convertible preferred stock is going to hold the security over the intellectual property until Trinity successfully raises the first $5 million. And they're going to use that $5 million to help deploy the preclinical and clinical developments of the acquired assets from Alzac. But what is Alzac all about? Well, Alzex is a Canadian-based development stage biopharmaceutical company which has developed and patented precision therapeutics for the treatment of Alzheimer's disease and other neurological diseases. It currently holds two families of patents via an exclusive and unlimited license agreement with INSA. That is a major French academic engineering and research institute. Alzac has devised an innovative therapeutic approach aimed at treating brain diseases by means of highly selective bioprecursor drugs, also known as prodrugs. Prodrugs are great, folks. They give us a little more info about prodrugs. This new class of drugs, prodrugs, do not deploy any biological activity before they have crossed the blood-brain barrier and hence do not induce significant side effects. In other words, the drugs don't metabolize. They don't go into action until they get to their ultimate destination. When you take a pill, it's got to go through your organs, your liver, your kidney, your intestines, and all of these are getting some of that drug, which it's not meant for those parts of your body. So you get all sorts of weird side effects. A pro-drug is neutral. Do, 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 passes through all of that without any problem until it gets to where it's got to go. And then boom, then it explodes and starts doing what it's supposed to do. So you get a lot less side effects, which everybody is happy about. The therapy can then target specific receptor sites in more selective way, forming a superior delivery system through the blood-brain barrier. This technology could potentially be applied to any number of brain diseases. The company will be issuing a series of additional press releases in the future related to additional board and management changes as well as the composition of its newly formed scientific team. So they've got a new company. They are going to have to make $5 million to promote the company's 
uh, intellectual properties and to fulfill the rest of their deal. And they're going to be giving us more news on top of it. So things are moving now. The company isn't making any money. They need to make money to finish the deal. So we should see some revenues coming in. That's why everyone got excited. But having a super duper low float does not hurt. That gets the price moving fast. It's not about what people want to pay. It's what they have to pay because the people holding the stock don't want to let it go. They see it going up and up and up and they wait for it and wait for it. By the time you get your stock, you've had to pay a lot more for it because of supply and demand. And I'm almost sure this stock was higher than 700%. I don't think that's what its high was. Let's go see. As always, folks, we're going to be doing our charting on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. I got this over at TD Ameritrade. If you sign up for a free trading account with them, you don't have to give them any money. You don't have to trade with them. Just keep your account open and they'll give this to you absolutely free to use anytime you want. So we are looking at TRRI six month, four hour chart. Now this chart has some huge gaps in trade activity. Right here, it looks like it's only a couple days back, but that is actually May 10th. And then our next trade day, not counting the pre-market aftermarket activity, is six weeks later, June 30th. The very next trade is two weeks later, uh, July 5th. Next day is July 22nd, another two and a half weeks. And then there's another week go by until today. Now, the last day she traded, the 29th of July, she was at 14 cents. And today she jumped to $2.23. You're looking at almost 1,800% gains on that jump. And it looks like she's fallen back about 50% of those gains. As you would expect, the technicals are screaming because of today's movement. 20 day, one hour view. Well, that's interesting. We only got three days on our 20 day view. You have um, July 22nd. July 29th, which really didn't show up on the last chart, and then today. Now, she was here at 14 cents, and that up there is 1,800% gains, but we didn't get that. We ended up with 700%. Now, I do see there was some pre-market activity here. She's on that side of the line, and the sad part is, is when I come down to the five-day, five-minute, they won't show it to me. I just can't see that over here. Now, I could jump in there and play and tweak it a little bit, but it had to be lower because the open price at the bell, this is 930 right there, was 50 cents. Well, if the price got up to $2.23, you're looking at about 450% gains. Well, it says she finished the day at 700 down here at a dollar and a quarter. So she had to be darn near, oh, well over a thousand percent up here. So I don't know what the price was that she opened up at. But at $1.25, she finished the day at 700% gains. Now, she hit her high here of $2.23 10 minutes before 10 o'clock, 10 to 10. Now, I've got a rule. When I see an outstanding run, just a runaway surge first thing in the morning, I don't expect that to keep going. I mean, it could, absolutely could, but <laughs> more often than not, they don't. So what I do is I get out no later than 10, 10 05. I see it running, running. I say, God, it just doesn't look like it's gonna stop. I'll hang on till 10, 10 05 and then I get out because I've noticed a dip across the entire market right at about 10, 10 05. It's making a decision, what's it gonna do? And before it decides, I just get out. I take my gains and go cha-ching. So this at 10 to 10, stop rising, and started to fall. At five to 10, she was already down here. And look, folks, she fell all the way down to a dollar three from $2.23. That is a huge fall, folks. So I like to just take my gains. And if she continues running, that's okay. I'm not gonna go broke by leaving money on the table. But if I don't take gains and watch them throwing away, that's how you're losing money. You might as well take the money each morning on those fantastic runs that you can't predict. That's my plan. Now, I don't know where she exactly started, but if I draw a line from the bottom of the surge to the top, and I know it was lower than this, absolutely was. I mean, seriously, it's got to be somewhere down here. It has to be, which would put our halfway mark somewhere about here, right? And what I'm talking about is of all the money it threw on the table, I wanted to keep 50% of it. I don't want to see it throw away more than half. 
If it does throw away more than half, it normally comes under this line and starts to fall until it hits a strong SMA or just comes down to the bottom again. But if it can hang around this line, just underneath like a monkey or sitting on the top, it doesn't matter. I feel confident that it's going to continue to grow, that it's going to hang on to those gains. And this is pretty much on the money. She's hanging right on to that 50% mark. Now, the technicals don't look great. Our PPO, like the MACD, you want that blue line on the top. Both of them are underneath. And the MACD is under the signal line. Our trend line shows not any change right now. It just shows that the trend is going sideways. As you can see, it is just sideways. You can't see if it's going up and down yet. And when this starts making a straight line, it doesn't matter if it's up or down. It's telling you that it has picked a trend. So wait for this to start showing a direction and stay going in that direction. And when it changes, that's when the direction of the price changes. And RSI is rising right now. So there's a lot of things. It doesn't look strong technically, folks. It is sitting on a, a good position here, but the technicals don't look like she's going to push. But you're looking at a stock that just made an acquisition that hasn't had any news in nine years, has a super tremendous low float of under a half a million. If this thing does over a million shares, you're cycling through that float multiple times, supply and demand. You can see this thing run really hard. And they need to make revenues, not to just put revenues on the board, but part of their obligation to close this deal is that they've got to make $5 million that they can invest into the assets and then they get control of those assets. So they're motivated to do some work. So I like this company. Whether it's going to move tomorrow or not, I don't know. But I know there's going to be a secondary jump and they're going to be putting out more news presses. So I'd be putting TRRI on my watch list. Yes, keep an eye on it tomorrow. Just because it doesn't look like it's not going to move doesn't mean it won't. You see some volume coming into this. That low float could go to the moon. All right, we're going to give this next stock a try. This is ticker XOEEF, X1 Esports Entertainment. As you can see, she has no price available here. There was big news. It came out today in news press. It was excellent news. When I went to look at the charts, obviously I put in ticker XOEEF. I could find no charts, not for Friday, not for last week, last month, last year, three years ago. There is absolutely no charts for that ticker. So common sense says, well, obviously they changed the ticker. Just go find the old one. And the easiest way to do that is look at old filings. So that's what I did. I jumped into all their old filings. Well, no matter how far back I went, and there weren't a lot of them, but I did look at them all. Every single one of them has X1 Esports Entertainment listed on it. And some of them go back a couple years. So I don't know what the deal is. I don't know why there is no chart activity. They are pink current. They're not on the expert market, so they are tradable. Where are they? So I don't know when this is going to come on the market. I don't know the value of this stock. I have no clue. All I know is they've had big news and it is in technology that is growing right now. So we at least should keep an eye on it. So ticker XOEEF is on the pink tier and current and has independent directors. That's really all I can tell you here. And independent directors, they only have one purpose. You need them whenever you're going to uplist, whether it be to the QB on the OTC market or all the way up to the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange. You must have independent directors. If you don't, you can't uplist. And you really don't need them for any other reason. So we could be getting a little bit of a peekaboo here. Now, we do not have a verified profile. We do not have a verified transfer agent. Not a lot of information. Now, their description, X1 Esports is an esport portfolio company which owns and operates a growing esports franchise, Rick's GG. Now, we can't look at the relative volume because there's absolutely nothing to see. And I can't show you even the share structure. They don't have anything here. And I went looking on Google. I did use it. I could find nothing. Financials, there's nothing here. That F on the back here means that they are a foreign company. And where is this company from? They're from Canada, right there. So we know they're from Canada. Now, it's not that they're not filing because they are pink current. They just don't have anything to file over here for financials. That means they're in their own country, Canada, and they're not bringing them over here. It's not that they don't have them. We're just not getting to see them. And here's their filings. Going back 22, 2021, I could find absolutely nothing. So all we have, I mean, absolutely, all we have is the news. 
Now, as you would expect, the OTC markets doesn't have any news either. It's just really just a blank page for information. But I did a Google search and I found a news press that actually came out today. X1 Esports closes the acquisition of Tyrus as the company builds a leading video games and creator economy business. They go on to tell us that the acquisition is intended to expand X1 Esports reach into the Gen Z demographic and add additional revenue streams. Tyrus's talent operates as a digital influencer management firm, and it specializes in working with YouTube, TikTok, and Twitch content creators, brand ambassadors, and brands across all social media channels. Tyrus's client roster of over 60 high-profile content creators has combined a reach of over 20 million followers. Tyrus has also worked with leading global brands including Warner Brothers, Omen, Best Buy, Hello Fresh and Panera. Now they have a little more information I was able to grab up. They came out with an investor's presentation here in June. This is the most information you're probably going to find. They tell us down here that eSports has three divisions to their business, media network, agency services, and gaming esports, and they have a subsidiary for each one. In 2021, X1 Esports acquired a competitive esports organization based in the UK. That is called RIXGG. During 2022, X1 has signed two term sheets. This is for Tyrus TV, that's the agency service, and Shift RLE, which is media and network. And then they give us a little bit of information about each company. Tyrus is a subscription-based revenue model business overseeing the social media distribution of TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, Instagram for many of the top gaming and entertainment talents in the world. Shift RLE is an online hub for news and intel related to Rocket League, one of the fastest growing esports in the world. Rocket League averages 6 million daily players, with over 90 million players logging into play in the first two months of 2022. And finally, Rix GG. Rix GG is a competitive esports organization based in the UK, fielding teams in League of Legends, Wild Rift, and Valorant. Rick's GG has also hosted esports tournaments such as Huntress Trials to provide females and marginalized gender groups a way to compete in esports as well as to scout talent. And this is a growing market, folks. It's getting bigger and bigger, and it seems to be growing really fast over in the EU and in the UK, more so in the States. And we love our games over here, but esports are booming over there. Now, I would normally take you over to look at the chart, folks, but there is absolutely nothing. It's blank. It says there's nothing to be seen. So all I can tell you is watch X O E E F in the charts. Just watch to see if any volume comes up. I have no clue what's going to happen here, but they just made a deal and there's got to be a response, right? So this is a mystery stock, mystery play. We'll see what goes on. We'll check it out at a later date. All right, let's go check out another stock here. All right, we're going to do something very unusual here. We're going to look at two stocks at the same time because they've got so many similarities. I think there's some sort of pattern we might be able to recognize that's occurring on the market, some sort of trend we can cash in on. Both of these companies did some serious gains last week. When I say serious, I'm talking into the thousands, multiple thousands of percent gains. Both of these are Chinese companies that just IPO'd in the last couple of weeks. Both of these companies came on the market only selling their free float. No warrants, only the float. One, this one here, had only 5 million shares. The other one had only 20 million shares. There was a lot of prep about these companies coming on the market. You could see it on Twitter. People were talking about it, but nobody was expecting this sort of explosive growth from these companies. The first one we're looking at here is Meagle, ticker M-E-G-L. This is Magic Empire Global Limited. Look at that price, folks. This started on Friday. It was its first day on the market at about $4 a share. In a matter of hours, she hit a high of over $235. Then she fell by the end of the day down to $97, only holding 2,300% gains. Now, if you're not impressed by that, how about this? 
after market on Friday, she decided to start climbing again and went to $184. That morning, she was at $4. After market, she finished at $184. That is putting this at close to 5,000% gains. That is incredible for a first day. The other company is HKD. This is AMT Digital. She finished today at $721. Now that was how she finished on Friday. Her gain was earlier in the week and she went up to $2,555 starting at about eight bucks. And she was like around $12 before she started the run to $2,555. Unbelievable gains, folks. I know you're sad you missed them, right? So I wanna show you what's going on with these Chinese companies that are IPOing with small floats so maybe we can catch some more. I'm also going to show you as soon as we're done looking at these charts a couple of other Chinese companies that are moving on sympathy plays. They're gaining just on this sort of thing happening. So let's go take a look at the charts for HKD and Meagle. So we're going to be looking at some very small charts for Meagle and HKD. They're only up there since the time they IPO'd. So Meagle has only got one day of chart and we got two weeks on HKD. So let's take a look at Meagle a little bit closer. Now I see a low bubble here of $49.25. Folks, I'm telling you, she started off at $4. Pre-market, there must have been some activity. I don't know. Or the very first bounce went from $4 to $50. Just like that. I assure you she was at $4. I did my homework. And she jumped all the way up here to $235 by 1.30 in the afternoon. And then she fell really hard from 235 all the way down here to $68. You're looking at almost three-fourths of that was lost. She settled here at about $97 at the end of the day, went sideways for a few, and then started the climb. And she is now up here at $184. She looks like she wants to continue climbing. The technicals are strong. I'm not gonna say they're on fire, but they are strong. We have now moved enough shares to get us a 50-day SMA, which I am always leery about seeing those come on the board because for some reason it seems that the price likes to gravitate to wherever it is, up or down. So this could come down. However, I don't know who's buying this stock. I don't know if it's a bunch of Chinese investors that are pushing it up. Obviously, right now, nobody wants to get into this thing. I mean, you could. It's now become like a game or an AMC. It could move hundreds of dollars in a day. You could buy it at 184 and double your money real easy, quadruple your money. Who knows? But we're just looking at this not to play it, but to see what sort of pattern is going on. But I assure you, this started at $4, went to 235 closed at 97 and it's now at 184 less than 24 hours for a 5000 percent gain and this up here oh my god this had to be close to 6000 7000 percent gains up there it was huge now let's go take a look at hkd hkd has got about two weeks it actually came on the market at eight. Lowest bubble I can get here is $12.05, which you can see she was roughly around there somewhere. Now it says she was at $50 right here. She is slowly climbing and then she took off. I mean, folks, she went from that $12 to $50 and then jumped to 215, jumped to 492, 946 to 2,555 dollars wow and then she fell really hard she's under the 50 day which she hasn't really been under since she's been here she is now trying to climb back up with another dip behind her all the technicals look like she's about to give it all up this to me looks like a perfect pump and dump except that it happened a little slow i would have expected it back here earlier in the game so why it took so long for a pump and dump maybe it isn't a pump and dump so again, I have no clue what is going to happen with HKD. Now, I'm not telling anybody to buy in at $721. Actually, it looks like it's fallen to $640 after market. Still not a great buy, not as far as I'm concerned. But you can see what's going on. So we want to be looking for Chinese stocks. We want to be looking for Chinese stocks that are just IPOing. Now, this is a bit strange because I'm reading news out there right now that they're trying to pull the Chinese company Alibaba off the market. 
they still have problems in China with their companies. So I don't know how safe any of this is. So we're not looking at long plays. We're only looking at day trades, short swings, get them gains and get out. So let's go take a look at a couple of other Chinese stocks I found that did have bounces, but they had no catalyst. So the only thing you can say is they must be moving in sympathy on this. And this is how you can find stocks to play on Monday, other Chinese companies. And you can normally tell if they're Chinese by their name. I know it can be tough trying to find companies from certain countries, but that's what we're looking for because something, something is going on. We're now going to take a look at two more companies that are Chinese, but neither one of these really have any catalyst right now, except on Friday, both of them got almost 100% gains. No, they didn't keep them. They spiked and then came back down. And that's what your sympathy plays do. They don't hold their gains because they don't have any catalyst. And neither one of these companies really have any catalyst right now. The only reason they jumped, as far as I can tell, is sympathy on those other Chinese companies that were just getting all the attention. So the first one we're looking at here is ticker WAFU, Wafu Education Group. This is on the NASDAQ. It is a Chinese company. Now, they don't tell you they're from China down here, but you know how we dial the one before we make a long distance call in America? Well, that's our country code. One stands for America. The country code for China is 86. So if you see any phone number over here, that's what that is, a phone number. You see an 86 at the front, you know it's a Chinese company. Now, this company did not have any catalysts. So what was their volume? <laughs> Big jump. Went from 103,000 to 2.5 million. Share structure. Well, they don't tell us what the float is. I always go to the unrestricted shares to get my float. That's not available here. I did go look it up. I couldn't find it couldn't find it anywhere. So I can tell you this much. It is less than the outstanding shares. I know that for a fact. So it's less than 4 million. We've got another Chinese company with the low float. Keep your eye on those sorts of companies. Financials. Is Wafu making any money? Oh, well, they did at the end of last year. They did $8.5 million. We got three zeros there. We got to throw behind there. And they got to keep about 4.5 million of it. Disclosures, is there anything over here that had it running? Well, they did have a 20F form come out at the beginning of the month. This is a financial form. It's an alternative way of filing your financials, but that's a few days old. I'm sure that has nothing to do with Friday. And the news, well, we do have news over a month ago and that's it. So we have no new filings, we have no new news, and yet she jumped almost 100%. Let me show you on the charts real quick. So there's your four hour, six month chart for Wafu. We had a huge spike back here where she finally broke the 200 day SMA and she jumped down here from about 292, almost three bucks to 670. So over a hundred percent gains here. Short lived, right? Came tumbling down very fast, wanted back up there, but could not do it. Hit a low bubble of $1.93 and has been working her way up off of that since. Broke the 200 here, came underneath, tested it again, came underneath, and now she is launching. Looks like she's ready to continue growing on the four hour chart. Technicals are all growing, everything is starting to push up. We do have a negative, no it's not, nope, that's all positive. So everything looks good on the four hour. 20 day, one hour view, flat, low bubble starting to climb. She was above the 200 already. Now she's above the 50, above the 20, and she launched and she came down very hard, very quick. As I said, when you have a sympathy play, people see other stocks that are like this stock running and you'll get strong interest. And then the people back here say, hey, look, my stock's running. Well, I'm getting out, I'm taking my profit. And boom, everybody starts to sell. And look, there's your 200 day SMA just appeared because the stock volume finally picked up. And what happened? Just like I said about that last stock, I hate seeing these appear because the price likes to gravitate towards it. And boom, came right down to it and smacked it. Wasn't here before to smack, but now that we see it, we gotta pay homage to it, don't we? So that yanked it down as far as I'm concerned, pulled this right back down, and now she's going sideways. Technicals are mixed. You got a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but it all looks pretty cool. Do I expect this to bounce again? Psh, what do I know? It's a Chinese stock with a low float. If something starts running again in the Chinese sector, this very well could. With a low float, you should keep your eyes on it. 
And the other Chinese company that's moving on sympathy is BQ, Bulky Holdings Limited. She's on the New York Stock Exchange. You can see the confirmation here with the prefix on the phone number of 86. It is a Chinese company. She finished the day at $2.71 with 34% gain, so she did almost tag 100% before she fell. Now, I don't know what this company does. I think they're into pet supplies as well, but I'm really not concerned about that. What I'm looking for is, is this a Chinese company? Does it have a low float? Does it get some sympathy activity? If it does, I'm looking at it. And that's why we're looking at this company. So what was the relative volume around BQ today? Nice jump. Wow, without any catalyst, as far as I can see, she went from 373,000 to 8.1 million. Huge jump, folks. Share structure. They give us no information over here. I did look this up. We got to float just over 10 million. So every single one of these Chinese companies have real serious low floats. What are their financials? Well, they're doing pretty good. This is the last quarter, three months. They did $187 million in three months. So they're making money on their pet supplies. Guess Chinese like their pets. And they got to keep about $38 million of it. Their disclosures, we're looking for that catalyst, or is this just running on sympathy? Well, we did have a 6K come out here on the second of this month, and really what this 6K is, is the NASDAQ, or the New York Stock Exchange, as it is in this case, uh, telling this company they need more information. That's the problem. Chinese companies are restricted from giving all the information they're required to give because China won't let them. China says, we don't care what the United States wants. You don't tell them that. We don't want them to know. And NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange says, if we don't get that information, we will just delist you. We're not going to play that game. We want the information or you can't sell your stock. So that is what that 6K is all about. So we've got a lot of stuff happening with these Chinese stocks. I don't know if anything's safe. I just know they're hot. And if you're only in it for this long, you can get your money before they get pulled off the market. So let's see if they had any news to make this company run today. We got nothing that was brought in here. And they're just telling us that HKD was a runner on the third. Ear was a runner. We looked at ear. So no, there is no catalyst. She is moving on sympathy. So let's go take a look at BQ on the chart. Four hour, six month chart. BQ, we got a high back here of $10.80. A low here of $1.33. She's been under the 200 this entire time, under the 50 most of this time. She had financials come out here just a little while ago, and it gave it enough excitement. A pretty good bounce here. It actually broke the 200. Didn't stay there. Came back down. Has been working very slowly to get close to the 200. Slowly got on top of the 200. We had a bounce uh, here back ago, and I'm going to bet that is when HKD surged right there i'm going to believe this jumped on sympathy on hkd and friday she jumped on sympathy for meagle so this is a good sympathy play she likes to jump when other chinese companies jump huge huge jumps she went here from uh oh my goodness what's that low she was at a dollar 72 and went up to 373 so you are looking at over 100 percent gains on a sympathy play she came all the way back down right back down to where she was normal Boom, Meagle starts running in the middle of the day, just like here, in the middle of the day, it takes off again, and it jumps from $2 up to almost $4, another 100% before it came crashing down. Technicals are screaming. And if we look at that five day, five minute, there's your jump for HKD, there's your jump for Meagle. They did come back down, they held about 50%, right? This went up, came down, it's a little lower than 50, but it didn't throw it all away. This one went up, came down, didn't throw it all away. It did keep some of it. So I would definitely keep, I like BQ better than Wafu. This seems to have more sympathy plays on the other stocks that are running. BQ, Wafu. These are two Chinese stocks. There's lots more out there, folks. Go looking. DD could find you a real jewel. 
Well, I hope you're still with me out there. You didn't think I was done. No, I got one more very juicy piece of information for you here, folks. This is going to make searching for Chinese companies easy. I mean, I said go look for Chinese companies. You're thinking, how the heck am I supposed to do that? What's the shortcut to doing it? Well, the OTC market actually has a tool that can help you. Come on over here to the market activity link. Come down here to stock screener right down there at the bottom and click it. Bingo. This brings you over to a screener. Now they got lots of different filters you can use over here. Now I'm only going to give you a head start. I'll let you pick up the ball from here. But they've got country. You can choose what country stocks you want to see. So click this arrow. Scroll on down until you find China. There's China right there with 709 companies. And boom. There you go. You can put this in any order that you want. So you can see what Chinese companies were getting the biggest gains. Here's one ZZLL at 267% gains today. Only 700 volume. Eh, maybe a sympathy play. Maybe they got something going on. Maybe it's just a freak. But this gives you an idea. These are the companies that moved Friday. So maybe one of these was moving on a sympathy for Meagle. All you got to go do is look at the charts and see what is going on. This is what DD can do for you. Remember, folks, DD shouldn't be hard. Find the easiest way to do it. Get as much done in the shortest amount of time. DD, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.